Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Tyner TV's newest program, Ram 60. I'm your host, Jalen Sims. In honor of Black History Month, Ram 60 will be highlighting some of our city's most influential African-American entrepreneurs. In this episode, we're talking to one of the city's most prominent filmmakers about some of his journeys to the big screens. <laughs> In the beginning of the 1890s, African Americans were considered underrated in the world of cinema. The constant experience of segregation, discrimination, and derogatory stereotypes unknowingly prevented African Americans from succeeding in the world of cinema. At a time where moving pictures were the most prominent form of filmmaking, major studios used black actors and filmmakers fitting them in the movie where women were maids or nannies and men were servants or natives. Black filmmakers and producers challenged the idea of misinterpretation in modern films by creating their own films that portrayed African Americans in good light. However, it wasn't until 1919 when Oscar Micho became the first ever African American featured filmmaker. And since then, many African American filmmakers looking to break the stigma in the industry have scattered their talents across all of America's 50 states. Here in the Tennessee Valley, one of the most prominent filmmakers in the city, Lomo Films, who is a Tyner alumni, got his start out of curiosity, even though fast-paced technology at both his school and his house was extremely foreign. Here at Tyner Academy, there weren't, of course, technology, as you just said to me. So can you please tell us what inspired you to get into the world of film? Oh, um, man, um, it was accident, man. Like, man, like I used to play ball. I play here at Tyner. And um, I used to, it was this thing called and one out. I know y'all kind of young, y'all might not remember, but it was like street basketball. And uh, I used to play like that. I used to do some of that stuff in the real game. People would tell you, like, man, Mo will take it through your legs, he'll take it around your head, hit you in the head with the ball. Like, I used to do that stuff in the real game here at Tyler. And they came out with it and it went global. And one, it went global. And uh, one of my buddies, who's also a Tyler alumni, his name is Prince McKinney. Um, he played football as well. He was like, man, you ought, to, you ought to make one of them tapes, man. You be doing the same thing. So uh, at first it was just a plan to showcase my talent with basketball. You know, uh, but it led to me going to the pawn shop to purchase a camera. And uh, they had a program at Howard High School called uh, Midnight Madness. It was in the summertime where kids would go play basketball. So that was my muse. That was my... You know what you call the um when you paint the paint canvas that was your canvas <laughs> i got my punch out camera and i recorded it and i dubbed up all the tapes you know i learned how to make a highlight tape by playing here at tyner from coach turner mm -hmm. who ain't the coach no more but he taught us how to make a highlight tape and so i this was vcr days i know y'all don't do vcr <laughs> now but i put two vcr's together and i put all the highlights together and I went to the dollar store and I bought 50 tapes for one dollar a piece at the dollar store. And I dug all it. Now I want you to keep in mind, right now it's digital. You just press it and it go. I had to play the tape, which was like an hour long, 45 minutes long, to dub it onto another tape. So I had to do that 50 times. You know, and I had a and I went and sold the tapes and I sold all of them. That's when I knew this film thing, it's some money in this man. You know, and uh, after that, it was uh, Master P from No Limit Records. Uh, Master P uh, was from the projects in New Orleans, and I come from the projects here in Chattanooga. So uh, seeing him, what he did without being in Hollywood motivated me to say, man, I can make a documentary. I can make a movie. I can make, you know. So my whole thing was uh, to show what Chattanooga had because I felt like wasn't nobody representing Chattanooga. Lomo McDowell is a Chattanooga native who has ventured around the city creating films for and with some of the most famous people in the region. He's commonly known under his business name as Lomo Films and has created content that features Project Pact. Every week, Lomo Films is dedicated to serving his viewers the best of quality content and has a few projects coming in the future. As an independent filmmaker, you probably have projects coming out daily. You have things to do daily. So, would you care to tell us about some of your future projects coming up? Yeah, man. Um, well, it's, it's kind of broke down in class, man, because I got some things that I do daily. I got some things that I do weekly. I got some things that I do monthly. And I got some big projects that's like, it might take 
I don't know if y'all know it. It's the, the the great thing about being a film director and not so much being like a rapper or in hip hop is in hip hop music and rap they kind of put a, a age limit on your success. But as a film director, you don't too much see that. You can see somebody 80 years old make a film. You know what I mean? Like, and if the film is good, they going you know, they gonna tap into it or whatever. The project. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, some of my bigger projects, um, I just love Haiti. Mm. This film, this camera, this film and then camera, man, camera work, film directing, yes. has taken me all the way out the country to got to see how other people live. So I just love Haiti, working what on a doing in Haiti? film mm. oh. for a uh, documentary. Mm. You know, um, I love uh, Playa del Carmen, Mexico. Um, I just love their film. You know, um, and I got a project coming out, uh, I want to say, I don't want to put no exact date on it, because we, we working on some of the logistics of it, you know, so everything can um, can do how it's supposed to do, but I'm in talks with Netflix, National Geographic, a uh, whole lot of whole lot of big platform, you know, but I don't want to jump the gun on speaking on things I'm supposed to speak on, because of like contracts and stuff like that, so, but yeah, be on the lookout, man, I got some big stuff coming. Through all the people that Lil Mo Films has worked with, it's very surprising that he hasn't been invited to the annual BEC Awards here in Chattanooga. I asked him why. Depends on the BEC Awards. I know you've been doing work here in the city for a very long time. Yeah, man, I ain't never, <laughs> been doing all this work, man, and, uh, and I'm and I'm not I'm not by no means uh mad at those folks. Yeah. I'm not mad at them. You know, maybe I just don't know. Or maybe I'm not in that circle of mm -hmm. people that, and that's that's fine. You know. But it's, it's discouraging sometimes to be done put out this working, you know, like, yeah. I got people like Master P, I got people like uh, the 85 South Show, I got, I'm on, I'm, people know me around, I'm, I'm in Haiti, man, people in Haiti know me, Mexico, and it's like this thing going on in my own city, they can't even see, they don't even see me, yeah. you know what I mean, like, so it's like, it's kind of discouraging, but but um, I still give them their props because it's something that we need here in Chattanooga, and it just motivates me to work harder. To you know, maybe they'll see you, uh, a kind of alumni young man. Maybe maybe you'll put me on the radar or what they'll see. But uh, I would never. If I my advice would be anybody who's discouraged about that, I wouldn't let it stop me. Like I say, you got freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. I might not be on the BEC awards, but I can talk about it. So, you know what I mean? You know, be careful who you, you know, I can talk good about it or I can talk bad about it. You know what I mean? But I, I ain't got no hate in my heart, you know what I'm saying? But I will voice my opinion, you know, so. Lil Mo Films came back to his alma mater today to talk about film in our AV production class. You know what I'm saying? I just want to give you an example. We started this thing called t Fat when I was at Tiny. I don't even know if y'all still do that no more. t T5. We used to be like T5. You know what I'm saying? Okay, my generation, we started that. We created that. You know, and it was built off of uh, almost like a brotherhood. Also, I know y'all know about games. Almost like a game. You know, it's a title game. Like, if you're a part of T5, you're a part of the game. That's what gang game. If y'all know what y'all call it now. You know what I'm saying? So it was almost like a brotherhood or a fraternity. You feel me? But I can sit right here and I can be like uh, T5, T5, T5. That sounds cool. It's cool. You know what I'm saying? But watch this. I want y'all, I want to show you what being a tiny around. I want to give y'all an example of that today. You know what I'm saying? I see the ladies over here and I see the fellas right here. I want you three fellas. I want y'all to come stand right here. We finna do something real quick. Come on. Y'all work with me now. Work with me. Work with me. These two young ladies right here, y'all kind of quiet, I see. You know what I'm saying? I want you to come sit right here with this young lady. I'm finna show y'all something. I'm finna teach y'all something today. Y'all just work with me. Don't be shy. Y'all just work with me. Y'all work with me. Get right beside her, right here. Now, y'all just heard me say that, say that T5 by myself, right? Now, we finna, we finna get creative. We finna come over, so I want to show y'all something. Now look, I want y'all fellas over here, when I say T5, y'all say it with me and keep it going, don't stop. Just keep going, okay? Follow me. I'm going to go first, then y'all follow me. T5, T5, 
Nah, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> we, finna make, we finna make a song, y'all. Watch this. Look. Look, watch now. T5. T5. Keep going. T5. T5. Keep going. T5. I want to try a lady right here. Get what y'all gonna say. T5. 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 Come on. T5. Come on. T5. Come on. Do it. Do it. Keep it going. Do it. T5. Come on. Look. Keep it going. Keep it going. T5. Look, man. I want to try to do what I'm going to get with y'all. T5. 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 Look. You see what I'm saying? Look, you see what I'm saying? So look, what I'm trying to show y'all is me doing it by myself. It was cool. T5. T5. I was like, okay, he went to time. But when we put that together, you see what I'm saying? That it was unison. You know, so I just want to leave y'all with that. Y'all always remember that. You feel me? Like you can do good by yourself. But when you got a team and you what y'all what we call it family, we family, you feel me? Y'all always remember that. Cause these three brothers are gonna grow up one day and do something. Y'all gonna grow up one day and do stuff. And you might be like, well dang, I need to holler at him for this, and he need to holler at and it's, you know, y'all be back up here talking just like I'm talking to, to the next generation. You know, so y'all young right now. Y'all got time, you know, but just remember teamwork, teamwork, unity. You feel me? Y'all got to always ride with each other, even if you don't mess with each other. You know, y'all might not be as, you know, you might not be as cool with this group, or this group might not be as cool with that group. You know what I mean? But just remember that y'all ran y'all family. You feel me? Bonded through this school. You feel me? So that's what I'm gonna leave y'all with, that example right there of how when y'all bring this together, it's different from when you just doing it on your own, you know. So y'all remember that. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching this week's edition of Ram News. I'm your host Jalen Sims. Make sure you follow us on Facebook at Tyner TV and follow us on Instagram at Tyner TV Now. Good night.